Hi, this is Sean from Time and Talk. Today, I wanted to do a review of the Lip Nautic Ski, which I've had for a few weeks now. I wanted to run through, obviously, the pros and cons, the features, and then tell you what I think of it in general. So Lip, the watch company, was originally founded in 1867. And basically, they went through a period of difficulties between the 70s and the 90s. And eventually, they came back from kind of moving to Far East production to France in 2014. And that apparently led to the upholding again of former quality standards. So they're based in Besançon, which is in, in, in France. And the French made, obviously, disregarding some things like the, the movements. The Nautic Ski, which is this model, was first released in 1967 to celebrate 100 years of the company. And it was the first ever electronic watch with a date. Electronic watches were kind of precursors to, to quartz. So in terms of this particular model, if you look on the LIP website, you can get a variety of different dial combinations. You can also get one that's called the, I think it's called the Grand Nautic Ski, which is slightly bigger. But the specs of this one, obviously this one's got a blue dial. It's got numerals at 12, 6, and 9. It has a date. And the specs are it's 38 millimeters in diameter, which is 2 millimeters more than it was in the original 1967 version. It's 15 millimeters thick, which I was concerned about when I first bought it. I thought it would look ridiculous with it being so thick and quite small, but it doesn't. It wears normally, really. I mean, it is the thickest watch that I own, but you don't notice that it's really thick on the wrist. 18 millimeter lug width, 45 millimeter lug to lug, and it has in it a uh, Myota 821A, which I'll talk about a little bit more in a bit. It comes with two straps. So this one, which is a Tropic style rubber strap. Some people moan about how it's a little bit stiff. It is, but that's fine by me. A leather strap, which is kind of like a rally style um, leather. It's all signed and stuff like that. And I bought a a NATO in, in the French flags colours, um, you know, going to be uh, stereotypical, I guess. And uh, yeah, the buckles are signed on the bracelet, etc. as well. Just take it off the NATO to have a look at the movement a little bit. And yeah, so it's it's the Myota 821A, which is made in, in Japan. I mean, it's it's from Citizen, I mean, Citizen owned Myota. And apparently it's, it's, it's a workhorse movement. It's quite cheap to replace if ever you need to but it can be regulated to be relatively accurate. You get the display case back, and people have moaned about it and said, you know, um, why would you want a display case back on a Myota, just focusing there? But I think they've done a really nice job. I mean, it looks really nice. I, I've got a Tissot watch, which is around the same price point. This is 499 euros retail price. I think I paid 380 or something like that, pounds. But I've got a Tissot Auto 3, and the movement doesn't look as nice as this one. The movement's probably better objectively. But I, I like it. I, th I think it's really nice what, the, what they've done. What some people say about this Myota is that if you shake the watch, if it, if it undergoes a shock, and you see me doing it here, it stops for, for a couple of seconds and then restarts. You can see it there. Some people really, really hate that. And I can see why it would be annoying because how do you know how accurate a watch is? if the second hand stops when you shake it. It has to be relatively violent, the force, but you know that, that's the only thing that can see being a real problem. I mean, the watch is relatively affordable in the grand scheme of things. I know you might be thinking 380 pounds is quite a lot of money for a watch. It is, but why would anyone buy a more expensive watch if you could get chronometer accurate, amazing movements in a watch that's this price? Um, I like the way it looks through the through the case back. I think it's good, but apparently this this movement's good value. It can be relatively accurate if regulated, and you get a good kind of quality to price ratio with it. So I'm quite happy with it to be honest. You can see, you know, it's proudly French. This I mean, it's got Besançon and France, and rather than Swiss made because it's not Swiss made. You can see the 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 markers look well finished and and things like that bit round the edge is dust because at the, the, the rim of the watch, it doesn't have a bezel, it has an internal bezel, it's a super compressor diver. But 
you know, it, it looks quite well finished to me and the, the dial's really, really nice. So, I mean, in terms of the, the pros and cons, you can see there, you know, sapphire crystal in, in, in French. And I, I like that. I mean, obviously I'm a, a Francophile. I love French culture and I like the idea that it's got, you know, the French language on it rather than, you know, English and, 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 and whatever. So in terms of the pros and cons of the watch, the pros, history and interest of, of the watch. For me, it's got loads of history. I mean, it was the first ever electronic watch with a date. This company has, you know, a hundred and odd years of, of history. It's proudly French. This design is, is, is really interesting for me. The wearability and the size of it, it just wears really, really well. My wrist size is six and a quarter inches. So I have quite a small wrist and 38 millimeters is just a great size. This watch just wears really nicely on my wrist. I've got a Rolex Explorer 214270 and it wears slightly smaller than that and it makes me wish that the, the Explorer was slightly smaller to be honest. Here's the movement again. Like I said, I, I, think, it, I think it looks really nice. I can understand why you might ideally want something more than a Myota movement, but it's signed. It's got some decoration on it. It looks quite pretty to me. I'll show you here some some um, pictures of the watch on other straps. It looks good on other straps, and that's another pro of the watch. The quality is definitely there. I mean, it feels really nicely made. It's a really nice size. The loom's good. It's it's readable throughout the night. And I think you get you get a really good quality to value ratio with this watch. I think it's really, really impressive. Think about, you know, a, a super compressor diver, vintage inspired. You know, one that rivals this in terms of price. I, I cannot think of one. In terms of the cons, I'm just showing you some pictures, by the way, to make it more obvious how it wears on my wrist. Cons, the, the thickness, like I said, in the real world, it's not an issue, but I can see in terms of specs why it might appear that it might be an issue. Some would see the movement as being an issue. It isn't an issue for me. I didn't expect to get a super hot horology movement in a watch of this price point. That's not why I bought it. I didn't buy it for the movement. I bought it for the design and the overall quality of the piece. I've, I've always wanted one of these watches and I think having worn it for a couple of weeks, it's really, really impressive. I, I would really recommend it if you've been thinking about buying one. It's a great size. It's a great design. It's got some history. It looks good on various straps. So, so you know, go for it. I'm not a big fan of the internal bezel. You know, the, the top crown is for using using the bezel as you would with an external bezel on an ordinary dive watch. It's quite actually fiddly to, to, to play around with it when it's on your wrist. I can see that it would move and things like that. If you were using it diving, again, it's not a big issue for me, but it's not a thing with this watch. It's all super compressor divers. Not for me, really, that function. That's all I can think of, really. I mean, another thing that's come up is the fact that the... The two crowns are placed a little bit weirdly, so they don't line up completely. That must be a deliberate design decision. And it's not a big issue for me, but I just thought I'd mention it. But in terms of cons, I'm literally trying to think of nitpicky things to to give as a con because I, I really think the watch is great value. It's really nice looking and I can't praise it enough, really. Okay, so thanks very much for watching. If you like the channel, please subscribe. Thanks very much.